Hey everyone, Team UDF here for more ZQuest Guide. And yes, we're using Cam Studio now because I don't want to risk Camtasia losing my files while I'm doing new stuff. So let's go ahead and continue. In this room, we're going to make some new blocks. And let's go ahead and put them here and here. Well, nothing too terribly fancy in this room. Also, for some reason, I've noticed that like the quests will some for some reason gain a bunch of resources like when we used to load it it had like 404 uh, combo sets or whatever and now it's got 50,518 or something like that I don't know why that happens but if that happens to you guys don't worry I don't think it means anything bad is gonna happen to your quest or anything so but anyway let's go ahead and move on here in this room we're just gonna we're not gonna have anything terribly new we're gonna have some self hosts I think And yeah, that'll... Oh, actually, I know one thing we can do. Let's go ahead and introduce some traps in this room. So let's go ahead. You can do traps in a couple of different ways. If you go to enemy flags, you can say you want corner traps or center traps. If you select corner traps, I'm just going to use the blocks to signify. I'm not going to actually put them down. A trap will appear here. Here, basically, all the corners. And what they are, they're those spike traps that move and they try to kill Link. Because they don't like him, and they want him dead. See, so yeah, bad things happen to Link when he comes into this room, so the player's going to have to know to get the crap out of Dodge. And it's kind of mean, but, you know, it's doable, because the player can just run right back out of the room beforehand and come back in. But yeah, it's a pretty typical uh, Zelda trap to have, or the spike traps. The other way you can do it, if you don't want to do it that way, or if it doesn't work for some reason, is flags 32 through 36 are different kinds of traps you can use for pretty much any purpose you can find them for. And they, they pretty much list out the rules, like this will make a spike that moves horizontal. And when it says line of sight, that means when it sees Link, it's going to rush towards him in that direction and see if it can hit him. But let's say you have a vertical trap with line of sight. If Link is walking towards it from the left to right, that trap's not going to attack him. It'll attack him if he tries to go up or down by that trap, but yeah. Uh, four way is pretty self-explanatory and you have horizontal and vertical traps that can be moved constantly like regardless if link is activating them or not they'll be moving around so we're going to try to keep the enemy flags for the corner traps in here to see if they work I really hope they do because I don't remember if they worked for me in 2.5 or not we're gonna have an exit to this room really we're gonna let link just kind of wade through this room if he wants However, we want some incentive for the player, so let's go to items, and we're going to give Link 20 rupees in this room if he kills all the enemies. Why 20? Well, because we're going to put it right up here. That's right, in the middle of two spike traps, so the player will have to navigate it. You could make this more difficult by putting a block here and here. Doing this and this would probably be a little too mean, especially for level 1, but you know, for the sake of niceness, I'm just going to leave it like this. Not really too over the top of a challenge. But yeah, so Link will come up here. He'll have to avoid one spike, grab the money and run out quickly, or get the other spike to do what he wants and bypass it that way. And of course, make sure you do enemies implies item. You know, I feel like I missed something on another screen. Let me let me double check everything here really quick. Uh, nothing in here. Okay, I guess not. And now the other thing I want to put in this room, though, is some water. So let's check our water tile here on page one. See, the type is water. But see, it doesn't look too nice, does it? Like, look at that. It doesn't look like water, I know. So let's change the color set and make it look kind of more presentable. See, now that looks a lot more like water, even though it's not, like, moving around or anything. And you know what? At the same time, let's go back to screen 70 and make these statues look a little more lively. So we can do that. And you notice when, it, when I hit replace, even if I'm like, well, it'll, it'll just replace that type of tile. It won't replace absolutely everything. So you can use replace for more than one different thing as well. And you know, my cold sore is kind of giving me trouble, so I apologize if I sound a little weird this episode. But yeah, so it looks like a good room to me. All right, I noticed that, uh, that cursor issue there, so I got rid of the cursor now. I'm, I'm going to have to remember that for the Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, though, because I liked to point things out with the cursor. And I also did some testing, 
So now I fixed some things, but I, I will have edited that into the last part. But yeah, I also went in here for no reason. And I, I guess the traps won't come at you the first time, but they do flow over the water nicely, so that should be okay for you guys. All right, let's go ahead to screen 52 here. We're going to have another trap for Link, but this one's going to be enemy related. We're going to go to some enemies. We're going to make some ropes. I'm pretty sure this isn't... Uh, like, this probably is by no means uh, something I can put claim to, but actually the way we're coming in the room, we're going to want a third rope. Alright, but this is just kind of something that's probably going to end up being a staple in my quest, a type of quote-unquote trap. Uh, we're going to set the enemies specifically in this room, so go ahead and grab your uh, your flags. And we're going to put them, um, you know, for level one we'll put them back a bit more. Put them right here. The idea, though, is that Link will walk in the room, and ropes usually hone in on the player, like you guys have seen, they'll, they'll like rush at you. So the, kind of the trick here is that Link will walk in, and the ropes will immediately rush at him. I guess that's not much reaction time to be had, but yeah. So he'll have some rope issues there. Other than that, I don't really know what I want to do with this room. Let's go ahead and make a... Make it a uh, kill all enemies room, I guess. As for the design, let's see, what kind of design do we want in this room? I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking of random designs I've seen in the past now. Just to kind of make this seem slightly like the NES game. Although this is by no means anything we're going to do over here, so we could give Link something to do over here. But maybe not yet. Maybe we'll leave this alone for now. And let's go ahead and test out the the traps with the flag types. So we're going to put some vertical traps here for Link. And we're going to make it constant. So we're going to have the trap constantly moving. We're going to play we're going to just place one there. And you know that'll do it. We'll just place one there. So when we walk into this room now, the trap should just be continually moving up and down. And it'll stop at the walls, hopefully. Traps give me tons of trouble for some reason, at least in the past they have, so, I don't know. <laughs> As for over here, actually, you know what, I know what we can do over here. We've been in the dungeon for a while, let's go ahead and give Link some uh, some key items. Enemy implies item. We can give him either the compass or the dungeon map. Now, if we give him the compass, let's go ahead and give him the, alright, let's go ahead and give him the dungeon map. We're, we're like five rooms in, well six rooms in, and this dungeon isn't that large at all, especially if Link does not find the secret we found him earlier. So we're going to go ahead and give Link the dungeon map on this, but I'm going to minimize that so that Z-Quest doesn't freak out. Alright. Now for the dungeon map, uh, it kind of depends on you as to where you want to put it, but like sometimes, like just think about it, when, if you're going through a dungeon, and you get the dungeon map at the very end. Like, what purpose does that serve? You've already beaten most of the dungeon. There's not much else to unravel. So you want to typically try to give the dungeon map out in a, in a, in a level fairly early. Now, this is a really small level, so it may seem like we're giving this out, like, super early. But, you know, for having gone through six rooms, we're actually almost a third way done with the dungeon here. So, yeah, I think that'll be good for this room. We've got a few enemies with specific placements. Got the dungeon map for Link, and we got the vertical trap. Let's go to this room, make our doors. Oh wait, actually, you know what? We've got to go back and... Well, enemy, enemy shutters... Never mind, I'm, I'm getting confused. Okay, never mind. We're going to do... Uh, we'll have shutters on both of these sides here. Uh-oh. What are we going to do in this room? Well, we're going to have our next type of block puzzle in this room. Alright, so before we make the block puzzle, let's go ahead and give Link some enemies to fight. I think by this point we can have some Gorias in here. So go ahead and pick some Gorias, or something else if you want. doesn't matter. I'll only give them four to fight. And what we're going to do in this room is a type of block puzzle I like to call replicate. Or not replicate, but uh, fix the pattern. kind of used sometimes. Basically what you've got is you have some kind of pattern in the room and then one block doesn't fit the pattern. 
and then you have a push block and you want Link to be able to fix the pattern. So let's say we put this block here. What we're going to intend Link to do is push the block in this open square here to complete the symmetry pattern of the room. You could leave the block like that or you could change the C set to make it a little more, whoops, make it a little more obvious that's what you're supposed to do. And of course since it's a push weight puzzle, Link will have to destroy the Goryas first before this can work. But now, the issue here is if we make this a block imply shutters room, and even if we like put the flag on and say we want it to move what? It's a uh, horizontal, many, silent, though for, uh, like, if you want to give your player more options or make them, like, work towards the solution a little more as opposed to just kind of giving them the direction of the solution, you could even make it a push four-way silent uh, as many times as they want to. So they could be pushing that block over here, over here, anywhere else. What's going to happen is the game doesn't recognize the solution itself. Like, it has no clue that's what we want. What we can do is we can tell the game exactly where we want the where we want the block to be placed. Unlike last time where we just had Link push the block once and the door opened no matter what direction he pushed the block. This time we want the block to have to go somewhere specific. So what we're going to do now is we're going to scroll down to flag 66 which is the block trigger flag. And we're going to place that here because that's where we want the block to be pushed in order to complete our little pattern here. So leave the block uh, trigger flag there. Let's go ahead and save it up. And now the doors will only open if Link pushes the block in this particular location. It doesn't matter where else he pushes the block in the room. Now something else you can do with block uh, puzzles in general is you can dictate where they can and can't go. Flag 67 is no push block. Like maybe I don't want the player to ever be able to move this particular... Wow, that was a really big miss move this particular block to any of the, the corner spots in the room. You know, I would just lob uh, 67 flags all over the place here. And now in every place you see a 67, a block cannot be pushed in that location. You can kind of do this to kind of help your players sometimes. Like the way it is now, your player could trap themselves if they push the block here or here because I don't think Link will be able to fit through that small gap there. He might be able to actually, but in some cases you just want to make sure you're using a flag 67 to prevent the player from messing up so badly that they have to F6 continue and start from the beginning of the dungeon. Because that's just not good. But in any case, so we've got it now. There's our second block puzzle of the dungeon. And even if you are like hesitant to, to believe that this is a legitimate puzzle, at this point what you could actually do is we've got this secret room here waiting for us. You could actually change the room type to, like, say, a uh, secret money room or something. Give the player some amount of rupees. But in the message string, then, you can make a message string giving a hint towards the player that, hey, somewhere in the future here you have to make the room symmetrical. So when the player comes into this room, if they haven't used that hint yet, then they might be able to figure out that, hey, this is the room I have to make look symmetrical. So I'm going to push this block over here, and the doors are going to open. And thus we can continue with our adventure. Okay, you know what? Screw Cam Studio. Uh, we're going back to Camtasia because Cam Studio desyncs like crap. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to redo my room 63 that I did in the other take. So what we did is we're just going to set up a couple passageways here. We're not going to require Link to do anything terribly specific in this room. We're going to set up some water here and some water down here. And we're also going to throw some statues in the middle of the room here because it's time to introduce a new gimmick called Statue Shoot Fires. It's in enemy flags. And there it is, right there, Statue Shoot Fires. It's very self-explanatory. You'll have these statues in the room and they will shoot fire at Link. Kind of like these snake statues in Parallel Worlds and, of course, these statues in the NES The Legend of Zelda game. Now what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to add some keys for Link to fight. Really basic keys. And this room is going to be strange. Because Link's reward for defeating these enemies is going to be an item, so enemy implies item. And it's going to be the boss key. However, what we're going to do is we're going to put the boss key up here. That's right, so Link will not be able to grab the boss key 
once he has defeated the keys. Oh, we're doing sneaky things. That's right. Because as you could probably have guessed by now, I've done two rooms with water in it. We will be getting the ladder in this dungeon. So Link will eventually have to grab the ladder and come back for the boss key. Of course, since I'm handing out the boss key pretty easily here, that's not going to be for quite some time. Kind of an odd presentation of the boss key, but, you know, part of my, motiv part of my uh, motivation in this series is to not only show you guys things you can do in ZQuest, but to just kind of get you thinking outside the box a bit. You don't have to go too terribly crazy, like, I don't know, I don't have any really outrageous ideas in here right now, but the level 2 idea I have is pretty ridiculous. In any case, just kind of a uh, go ahead and think exercise. You don't really have to do much else than that. And the other thing I did in this room 64 is I just set up the doors. We're not going to do anything with that in this episode, because uh, I don't know if it's going to be a full episode when I edit it, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and stop it here. Just have a passageway here. And shutters up and down. We have not used any one-way shutters yet. I don't have any really specific ideas as to where I want to use a one-way shutter in this dungeon, but I, I might just save it till the end and do something typical like the Triforce Room or the Boss Room or something. But yes, until then, that will do it for this episode of ZQuest Guide slash Tutorial. Next time we will be continuing in Room 64. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about Room 72. I know we haven't done anything there yet. Done it on purpose. So yes, thanks to everybody for watching. And I will see you next time for more ZQuest Guide, hopefully on Camtasia Studio, and hopefully it will be working.